All right, so there is our formula for the future value of an investment when you've got a regular amount going in. I is an interest rate per compounding period, so we have a little formula off to the side. And N is our number of investments. So, go to our first example here. Got the formula retyped there for you. Determine how many monthly investments of $200 would have to be made into an account that pays 6% annual interest compounded monthly for the future value to be $100,000. Now, I'm going to show you with the formula, because on your exam they may give you this formula and they may say, we want an algebraic solution. But I'm also going to introduce to you a very, very useful uh, program built into your calculator um, probably the program that I have used the most outside of math class of anything else with the graphing calculator. So, but it's mainly useful in your mid to late 20s, early 30s, probably that's when it's going to be useful. So you're going to have to remember this for like 10 years. Okay, or just watch the video again 10 years from now. Okay, so using the formula we want to find out how many, so that is N. How many monthly investments, because N is our number of investments. We want the future value to be $100,000. So this is exciting, because you're like, I would like $100,000. $100,000 could be nice. I've got $200. How long would this take? So we plug everything into the formula. R is 200. 1 plus, now I is your interest rate divided by the number of compounding periods or your interest rate per compounding period. So the interest rate is 0 0.06, and that's going to be divided by 12 because it's compounded monthly. To the power n, ooh, we need another, minus 1 over I again, which is... 0 0.06 divided by 12. So what we need to do is we need to get rid of the n out of the log. I mean out of the exponent. So we're going to use logs, but just like before, what we're going to do to start with is we're going to get rid of everything else so we just get the power by itself. So 0 0.06 divided by 12, I'm going to multiply both sides of my equation by that. So 100,000 multiplied by 0 0.06 divided by 12 is 500. So what I've done is I multiplied this side by 0 0.06 divided by 12 and this side by 0 0.06 divided by 12. That will get rid of the dividing. So anytime you have dividing in an equation, you can multiply both sides by, by what you're dividing by, and that will cancel that out. This ends up being 500. We've got, again, lots of brackets. So now on both sides, I'm going to divide by 200. slowly getting rid of all of the stuff that's in front of that power using our algebra skills. And finally, add 1 to both sides. Common denominator would be 2 over 2, so that will give me 7 over 2 equals 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12 to the end. So we have successfully got our power by itself. And that was some good algebra skills to warm up first thing in the morning. Now, how do we get that n out of the exponent? We have to take the log of both sides. Again, you can use log or natural log or log base 401, whatever you would like. Um, but we'll probably just take log 
log of 702 equals, and now that n can come out in front, right? That n came out in front because of one of our log laws. Now we can divide both sides. Take out our calculator to see what that value is going to be. I'll just All right, log of 7 divided by 2 divided by log of 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12. And we get 251.17. If you divide that by 12, that's almost 21 years. Because this is how many monthly payments? So you want $100,000, you got $200, it's not going to happen that quickly. But if you kept putting away $200 a month for 20 years, you would have $100,000 20 years from now if you were able to get that interest rate of 6%. Now if you think, how much money have you actually put away? $200 12 times a year, you'd put $2,400 dollars away a year, right? Times by 20 years would be $48,000 you'd put away. That's a pretty good deal then. You put away $48,000, someone else gives you $52,000. I could do that. Most people don't do that right away. It does take time because that's how interest rates work. It's not like, hey, how about I give you $48,000 and then you give me $100,000 back right now. That sounds like a good deal. Then you could get rich really, really quick. At the top of your page, you have space. And at the top of the page, you are going to write TVM solver. Now, TVM solver is a program on your calculator. You find it by going to your apps. So you hit your apps button. It is under your first one, which is finance. Push enter, and there it is, number one TVM solver. So push enter on that. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to write down all of these things. So it goes N. I percentage, PV, PMT, FV, pay, P per Y, C per Y, and payment. Now, on each of these, there's a value you can put in. So what we need to do is we need to tell what each of these things stand for. Starting at the bottom, whoa. C per Y is the number of compounding per periods per year. Your P per Y is your number of payments per year. FV stands for your future value. This, oh, I'm not going to put monthly because your payments per year is listed. But this is just your payment value. PMT stands for payment.
Well, this is your present value, so the amount that you start with. I is your interest rate, and it's not a decimal. So, and n is the number of payments, and generally what you put in here that helps you is your payments per year times by how many years. So this is what everything stands for, and then within this, you will be able to put everything in. There's just one special note. that you have to consider. And this note is with the present value, the payments, and the future value. And the way that the special note goes is any time that you are putting money away, taking money out of your pocket, putting in the bank, taking money out of your pocket, paying someone else, those values have to be negative. So any payments or deposits to the bank are negative. Any time you take money out of the bank or they're giving you, their, you your money back, those values will be positive. So if we look at our example, if we look at the example that we just did, what are some of the things that we know? We know the final value is $100,000. Now this final value, that will be a positive $100,000 because we want to take it out of the bank and put it back in our pocket. Have to have pretty big pockets, but that's good. So that's going to be a positive value. What else do we know? Interest rate is 6%, good. Present value is, well, this, so this we have to be careful because do we have any money in the account when we start? No. So our present value is going to be zero because we don't have any money that we've put in that account. But our payment value is going to be 200. And since we're taking that money from our pocket and depositing it, this is going to be negative. Payments per year, how many times are we making those payments? Once. 12 times because it's monthly. How often is it compounded? 12 times as well. So we go to our calculator. Notice we don't know. This is the one. So I like to take out a different color, put a star and an arrow to show. That's the one we don't know. So we'll just leave a zero in there for now. We'll put everything else in. So interest rate was 6%. Zero for the present value. We're putting in negative 200. Make sure you use the negative sign, not the subtract sign. We want the future value to be $100,000. Payments per year are 12. And I'll often automatically change the compounding pre period per year to be 12 as well. So with all of this in there, what we can now do is if you look above your enter button, you see it says solve. So if we go up to the one that we don't know, push alpha so that we can get to solve, 251.17. And that is a lot quicker than what we just did. So you push alpha and solve 
on N and it gets you the answer right away. And this program is super, super helpful because that formula that we just had just solved for future values. And it only solved for future values if you started at zero dollars. But this program solves for all sorts of things and allows you to look at different things. So you're saying, okay, well maybe I do want to start saving for the future. Maybe I want to put money away every month to see what I'll have in the future. Well, I have $500 right now. So what it would happen if I would start by putting that $500 into an account? So this allows you to put a present value in there. And you say, I'm working, but I bet you I could, I could afford to do $300 a month instead of $200. Okay? So I'm going to go to here and I'm going to put $300 and now I'm curious, how much money would I have in 10 years? Well, if it was 10 years, your N is number of payments. And in brackets I put, it's your payments per year time number of years. So since we're doing 12 payments per year, if I wanted to figure out how much it would be in 10 years, that would be 120. And this program lets you figure out all sorts of things. So now I want to know how much it's worked, worth in 10 years. So what am I trying to figure out? I'm trying to figure out the future value. So now I can go alpha solve on the future value and say, hey, if I did that, I'd have $50,000 in 10 years. If I'd have $50,000 in 10 years, how much do you think I'd have in 20 years? I'll change this to double it, 20 years. $50,000 in 10 years, how much do you think you'd have in 20 years? Guesses? No guesses, no one wants to go on a limb, you just want to know the answer? $140,000. And it shows you the power of compound interest. The longer you leave something in, the bigger and bigger it gets. You wait till you wait till 30 years. Of course, you might want to spend some of that money, but in 30 years, it'll be worth $300,000. So it shows you the power of investments. Now, this might be something you're interested in using this program for, but the main thing that you're going to find this useful for is if you are going to buy something that you need to take out a loan. So probably the most likely thing that's going to be the first thing that you're going to buy that you might need to take out a loan is a vehicle. So let's say you want to buy a car. How much is your car worth? How, much, how, how expensive a car are you buying? 18000 Now, let's say, let's say they give you, let's say they say, 5% interest to buy your car. How long do they let you buy your car over? Three years, four years, five years, sometimes it's like that. So let's say you're going to buy this car over five years and you're going to make monthly payments. So this will be five times 12. You're going to make 60 payments, 5% interest, and that car is worth $20,000. So here's where the negatives come in. Okay. The car is worth $20,000. If you buy it, what they give you the car. So basically, they are giving you $20,000. Whenever someone is giving you money to put back in your pocket, you're not actually going to put the car in your pocket, but that idea, we're putting that in as a negative value. So your present value when you get a loan is the amount that they give you. So they gave you $20,000 to buy this car. The future value of that loan is going to be zero because in five years you have to pay it all off. Your question is, how much do you have to pay per month? Can you afford your $20,000 car if it's 5% interest? Well, again, the nice thing about this program, you go to what you want to solve for, you go alpha solve, and you find out you could buy that car for $377 and 42 cents a month. The other interesting thing about this program is it allows you to figure out 
how much is that car going to actually cost me? Because I'm paying not only the $20,000, but the interest. And this is where a knowledge of math can save you a lot of money over time. Okay? I would, I would say I'm guessing that my knowledge of math and how interest rates work have probably saved me maybe 50, maybe more, thousand dollars compared to the average person just because I know how interest rates work and so when I was younger I was like I know how the bank is taking my money so when I had a chance I paid things off quicker and paying those things off quicker saved me probably fifty thousand dollars of interest charges that's a lot of money so knowing these things can be very very powerful so now I take this $377.42 and I'm going to times it by 60 because that's how much 377.42 is one payment and I want to find out how much it's going to be in total after 60 payments. So you're going to pay an extra $2,600 for that car. Not, it's a lot of money, but it's not a ton compared to what we're going to do next. Okay? So this is paying for a car, a $20,000 car. That's probably the first big purchase that you're going to do. Your next big purchase in your life, an even bigger purchase, is going to be a house. Houses cost more than cars. Okay? Some people sleep in cars because the houses cost so much. So how much does a house cost? Too much. It might be, it might be a $300,000 house. So the present value, the bank is basically giving you $300,000 because you are getting a house. Most houses you pay off over 25 years. So if we go 25 times 12, That'll mean you'll have to make 300 payments. Interest rates for houses are a little bit less right now. Right now you could get it for 3 or 4%. So we'll look at 4%. Again, you want your future value at zero. And in Canada, mortgages are allowed to compound twice per year, not 12 times per year. So that's a little bit of an advantage to the, ho to the home buyer. So you want to buy that $300,000 house. How much is that going to cost you per month? Fifteen seventy-eight. One thousand five hundred seventy-eight dollars and six cents. What does that mean? Times that by three hundred. And your three hundred thousand dollar house is going to cost you $473,418 in the end. Ooh, that's a little bit more than the $2,000 extra you paid on your car because of the amount of time that it takes. Now, the positive thing about buying a house is chances are once you've finished paying that off, your house that was worth $300 has increased in value because houses do increase in value. But you end up paying a lot more. Now, I gave you homework. I asked you to go ask your parents or grandparents what is the highest interest rates they remember paying for their house. Did anyone do that? Yeah, hi. That's what, they say to, that's what they say to you when you get home too, right? You say hello, they say yeah, hi. Okay. So, yeah, there were times where the interest rates skyrocketed. Right now they're at some of their lowest. So I talked about the other day how finding an interest rate that was lower will really save you money. So taking that extra time, you shop around, you spend three days nonstop working eight hours a day. So that's 24 hours of work and you find that you can save a half percent. And your partner who you're buying your house with here says, you spent three days for half percent? Well, how much is that going to save you? 
Well, let's go to 3.5% and let's alpha solve. Now, how much are we paying per month? Now it's 1497.81 per month. How much are you going to pay? Do you remember what the number was before? 430. We should have remembered what the number was. 400 and something. Well, we want to be a little bit. Okay, we'll resolve for 4% because we really should know this number. It was 1578 per month. Times 300, well, that didn't times. Here we go. Times 300. 473418. Let's remember that number. Because you just spent three full days getting a half percent off, which doesn't sound like very much. So we want to see what kind of a difference that half percent makes. Fourteen ninety seven eighty one. Times that by three hundred. Four forty nine. Now we're only talking a half percent, which isn't a lot. 343. Okay? But over time, that's $24,000. So you spent 24 hours nonstop getting a half percent off. You could pay yourself $1,000 an hour during that time. That's a pretty good job. I, you know, I might consider quitting teaching if someone gave me a job for $1,000 an hour. Be a tough decision, but I might just think about it for a bit. $1,000 an hour, and that's only a half percent. So when people said things were high, they were high. And in, at times, interest rates went up to as high as 18%. Insane. It's like a credit card. Credit cards right now are at 18%. If you don't pay your bill, I talked to you the other day about how much the average person might pay for $100 things. Like, it's crazy because the interest rates are at 18%. So people ended up getting rid of their houses because they couldn't afford to keep them. At 18%, now you want to buy that same $300,000 home. Remember our payments were like $1,400, $1,500 per month? Well, now they would be $4,400 a month instead of $1,500 a month. And how much does that mean overall? Well, now when we times that by 300, you're going to pay $1.3 million for that $300,000 house by the time you pay it off at 18%. So it makes a huge difference. You can see why people decided not to keep their house and try to sell it. But what happens when everybody tries to sell their houses? The price goes down. And we get housing crises and all sorts of crazy things like what happened in the States a couple of years ago.